Gravity is a law. But down here, the laws are broken. Imagine a force so powerful it can snap a human bone like a dry twig. Imagine a darkness so absolute that eyes become useless or grow to the size of dinner plates just to catch a single photon. To survive here, you cannot remain normal. You cannot keep your shape. You cannot keep your sanity. To survive here, biology has to break. It has to twist. It has to warp. As we descend into the abyss, the animals stop looking like animals. They start looking like mistakes. They start looking like monsters. This isn't an alien planet. This is Earth, 4,000 meters down. This is the dark biology of the deep sea. We are about to descend into a world where evolution creates nightmares just to stay alive. Subscribe now. You'll never look at the ocean the same way again. Welcome to the descent. We start at the surface. The blue zone. Here, life makes sense. Sharks, whales, tuna. They are streamlined. They are muscular. They look like the animals we know because they live in a world we understand. A world of light, warmth, and reasonable pressure. But we aren't staying here. We are going down. At 200 meters, the sun begins to fail. We enter the twilight zone. This is the first layer of the transformation. The pressure is building. The light is dying. And the biology begins to glitch. In the twilight zone, the primary rule is simple. If you can be seen, you are dead. So, the animals here have evolved a desperate solution. They delete themselves. Meet the glass octopus. It isn't camouflaged. It is absent. It has dissolved the pigment in its skin. It has rendered its muscles transparent. It is a ghost in the machine. You can see its brain. You can see its optic nerves. But the rest of it? It's just a ripple in the water. It has stripped away its own identity to survive. But transparency is just one way the ocean warps you. Sometimes, it forces you to look wrong. Meet the barrel eye fish. It looks like a sad, dark fish with two small eyes on the front of its face. But those aren't eyes. They are nostrils. Its real eyes are inside its head. Its skull is a transparent, fluid-filled dome. Inside that dome, two glowing green orbs float in liquid, pointing straight up, looking through its own brain case to spot shadows from above. It creates a face that feels deeply uncanny. A face that evolution assembled from spare parts. But 200 meters is nothing. The pressure here is manageable. The real warping hasn't even begun. We drop deeper. Past 1,000 meters. Welcome to the midnight zone. The sun is gone. The temperature is near freezing, and the pressure is now crushing. It is the equivalent of having an elephant stand on your thumb. This is where the monster factor kicks in. In the midnight zone, food is almost non-existent. A meal might come once a month, once a year. So, evolution creates a new rule. If you find food, you must catch it, no matter how big it is. This rule warps anatomy. It stretches jaws. It expands stomachs. Look at the gulper eel. It is mostly mouth, a swimming hinge. Its jaw is so loosely attached to its skull that it can swing open wide enough to swallow an animal larger than itself. It looks ridiculous, like a cartoon drawn by a frightened child. But it is a masterpiece of desperation. It is a biological trash bag designed to scoop up anything that moves. Look at the viper fish. Its teeth are so long, they don't fit in its mouth. If it tried to close its jaws completely, it would pierce its own brain. So it swims with a permanently open, jagged grin. A living bear trap that can never be reset. It is a face of pure aggression. But it's not aggression, it's fear. The fear of starvation. 
the fear of missing that one single meal that keeps it alive for another month. But the physical warping is only half the story. The darkness does something else to these animals. It changes how they hunt. Down here, light isn't something that comes from the sun. It's something you make. It's a weapon. We call it bioluminescence. But in the midnight zone, it is usually a trap. The black dragonfish. It is a long, eel-like nightmare with teeth like obsidian shards. Red light is absorbed quickly by water. So deep sea eyes have evolved to see only blue and green. But the dragonfish? It produces a beam of red light from under its eye. It is a sniper with night vision goggles. It can shine a spotlight on its prey. And the prey doesn't even know it's being lit up. It hunts in a private world of visibility, slaughtering animals that think they are hidden in the dark. And then there is the anglerfish. We know her. The lure. The teeth. The parasitic male fused to her body. She is the poster child of deep sea horror. But look at her shape. She is a blob. She has no speed. She has no muscle. She is essentially a floating stomach with a mouth attached. Why? Because muscle costs energy. And down here, energy is too expensive. The ocean has stripped away her ability to chase. It has stripped away her ability to fight. It has warped her into a static, patient landmine. But we can go deeper, past the midnight zone, into the abyss, 4,000 meters down, 5,000. The pressure here is unimaginable. It warps the very chemistry of life. Proteins start to unravel. Cell walls want to collapse. To survive here, you cannot be hard. You cannot have bones. Bones would snap. Air pockets would implode. So, the animals here become gelatinous. They become fluid. They become ghosts. Meet the snailfish. It is the deepest living fish ever discovered. It lives in the Hadal zone, the trenches, 8,000 meters down. It looks like a translucent tadpole made of melting wax. Its skin is thin. Its skull is not fully closed. If you brought it to the surface, it would melt. It would disintegrate into a puddle of goo. It survives only because the crushing pressure holds it together. It needs the crushing weight of the ocean just to exist. It has been warped so fundamentally that it can no longer exist in our world. And then, there is the opposite reaction. Sometimes, the deep sea doesn't make you melt. It makes you grow. This is called deep sea gigantism. In the cold, oxygen-rich waters of the abyss, metabolism slow down, lives stretch out, and animals just keep growing. Giant isopods. On land, they are pill bugs. Tiny roly-polies you find under a rock. Down here, they are the size of a football. Armored tanks scuttling across the ocean floor, eating dead whales. Giant squid. Eyes the size of basketballs. Tentacles that can grapple with sperm whales. Sea spiders. On the surface, they are barely visible. In the abyss, they grow leg spans like dinner plates. They suck the juices out of anemones with a proboscis like a straw. Why? Why does the ocean make them monsters? Because down here, being big is efficient. A bigger body retains heat better. A bigger body can store more energy. A bigger body can travel further between meals. The monster isn't trying to be scary. It is trying to be efficient. But there is one final horror. The deepest horror. It's not what the ocean does to their bodies. It's what it does to their reproduction. In a world this empty, finding a mate is statistically impossible. So evolution gets creative. We see hermaphrodites, animals that are both male and female, so any two individuals can mate. We see the anglerfish fusing bodies together forever. 
we see the zombie worms, Osedax. They live on the bones of dead whales. But when scientists first found them, they could only find females. Where were the males? They looked closer. Inside the female's body, the males were microscopic, tiny larval blobs living inside the female. Not just one, dozens. A harem of microscopic males living inside her tissue, existing only to fertilize her eggs. They never grow up. They never leave. They are born, they breed, and they die, all inside the body of the female. So, why does the ocean warp animals into monsters? It's not trying to scare us. It doesn't care about us. These animals are monsters only to our eyes. To us, they look broken, deformed, terrifying. But in the crushing dark, in the freezing cold, in the silence of the abyss, they are perfect. So the next time you look at the ocean, don't just see the blue waves. Don't just see the dolphins. Remember what lies beneath. If you thought the deep sea was warped, wait until you hear more about the animals that live in it. Click the video on the screen to watch. For more investigations into the dark, bizarre, and unbelievable side of nature, subscribe to The Dark Biologist. You will never look at the world the same way again.